Okay, let's talk about how to solve this particular word problem. And this is, a, uh, I would say, this particular level of uh, math would be appropriate at at least the sixth grade, um, definitely middle school and uh, absolutely uh, high school students should be able to handle this. But if you're at the sixth grade middle school level, you certainly uh, will be learning you know, math, uh, these kind of math uh, topics and skills involved to solve this type of problem. Now, I'm going to obviously solve this here in just one second, but I encourage those of you uh, to think about it, maybe pause the video, see if you can solve it. That's always a good way to, um, you know, make the most of my particular videos. But obviously, I'm going to solve this, and not only that, I'm going to give you kind of a general uh, outline of uh, word problems, how to approach word problems, because you can't have one specific procedure to solve word problems because word problems are different and they require different skills. But we can write out a basic outline, a basic uh, general approach that you want to be thinking about. So we're going to get to this particular problem in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can uh, check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have um, all the main courses starting from pre-algebra. So I have pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, uh, algebra two. Uh, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here uh, shortly. But I also um, have many specialty courses in the area of uh, uh, test preparation. So if you're preparing for tests like the GED, SAT, ACT, uh, GRE, GMAT, Accuplacer, CLEP, uh, Alex, uh, uh, teacher certification, nursing entrance, uh, there's a lot of reasons people study math outside of an actual math course. So anyways, I can definitely help you out. Just go to my site and check out my um, course catalog. If I don't have the exam you're preparing for, drop me a line and I'll give you my best recommendation. I also work with uh, independent learners like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning program, so if that's your situation, I can definitely help you out. And then I work with those of you that are needing some assistance in your math class. I could definitely help you out as well. Now, I did or do teach a middle school mathematics. Uh, I don't have uh, like a sixth grade math course right now, but uh, my most basic course would be pre-algebra, which I think is still covers a tremendous amount of concepts and topics that you will be learning in a middle school. So that would be my uh, lowest course if you're interested. But one thing you need to be doing as a math student is be taking great math notes. Over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take great math notes almost always end up very happy with their grades at the end of the year. And then those students who just like to talk to their friends, you know, look at their cell phone, maybe do homework in another class, just kind of doze off. All the things that I did way back in the good old days, well, you know, you're going to struggle, you know, and then at the end of the year, you're going to be, you know, with a sad face. You're like, I don't like my grade. What happened? What happened to me? What happened to my math grade? Well, I would uh, I would say 90% mm, of those uh, students you know, they they didn't take math notes. And if they did, it would look like scribble scratch. You know, I made all these mistakes. So it's natural. A lot of you out there um, are probably making those mistakes right now. Uh, you know, I know that just from experience. So if you want to help yourself in math, and I assume that you do if you're watching this video, focus on your note-taking, neatness, organization. Everything will get better. But in the meantime, you need something to study from if you don't have any math notes. So I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so we're going to get into this particular phone. Uh, particular phone. <laughs> the, the, we're talking about phones here in the word problem, but this particular word problem. So let's just quickly read it once, and I'm going to give you an outline, and we'll solve it. So it says, out of 32 students in a class, 24 prefer iPhones over Android phones. So based on these results, how many of the 500 students in the school can be expected to prefer using iPhones. So that is our problem. And if you think you know how to solve it, you know, go ahead and do so. Now, uh, when you solve a problem like this or any problem, okay, and you're going to turn, you can solve it for a math test or a homework problem, you need to show evidence. Uh, you need to show like a, a reasoning logic. What you can't do is like, here is my answer. I just did it all in my head and I used my calculator, but I think this is the right answer. That's not good enough uh, for um, 
you know, teachers. They're not going to really, you know, probably give you much reward for that in terms of points. Okay, if you're taking a multiple choice question or a multiple choice test, then yeah, if you select the right answer, well, that's a different thing. But still, you need to show evidence uh, of you know, applying math skills that are going to be relevant to this particular prompt. So whatever you do, show your work, show your logic. Okay, that's critical. But now let's just quickly talk about a general outline for word problems. So let's write this down, word problems. All right, so what do you want to be doing when you solve word problems? So the first thing is you need to read the problem. And you're like saying, Okay, Mr. Math teacher, that's like pretty obvious. Please tell me I didn't waste my time watching this YouTube video, but you tell me to read the prompt. No, I mean read the prompt like five times at least. So you don't read the prompt once. You're going to have to read, read, reread, go pull information out, reread, triple check, double check. <laughs> so just, you know, uh, don't think that you're going to read uh, the prompt one time and then start working on it. You're going to have to go back and double, triple check. And oftentimes it could be at least, say, five times go, uh, pulling pieces of information out. So first thing is just read the prompt once to get a flavor of what's going on and then, you know, go from there. So the second thing is, in terms of word problems, you want to make some sort of model, uh, some sort of sketch, a figure. So this could be a sketch. This could be like a table. This could be all kinds of different things. All depends on the word problem. So try to create some sort of uh, sketch um, to what's going on. Now, more often than not, you can do this. Sometimes you can just kind of get right to it. Uh, sometimes... This could be somewhat of an optional thing. It's more often than not, though, you can create some sort of model. But we'll take a look at this particular specific problem here in a second. But a sketch, you know, a, some sort of graphical way to think about it is always very valuable. The next thing you want to do is you want to assign variables, okay? This is what you want to do. You want to say, okay, I'm going to let x is equal to this, okay? So that's another thing that or the kind of the next step when you're solving a, uh, a word problem. And then you like to solve some sort of equation. You need to build some sort of equation. Now, uh, you you know, at this level of mathematics, you might not be doing full-on algebra, okay? But you are solving for an unknown. So when I'm, I'm kind of loosely talking here, this is very, really relevant to like algebra word problems. But uh, even at the sixth grade level, you are learning basic algebra concepts. So you're going to uh, establish some sort of unknown variable, okay? And then you're going to set up some sort of equation to solve for that unknown. Let's say it's X, right? Then you're going to uh, finish out step five. You're going to solve for what, it, what you're looking for. In this case, X is some unknown value. And then lastly, we want to make sure we answer the right question because sometimes when we answer uh, we solve for this variable we solve for x we got to make sure that in fact it is the answer to the question and that means we have to read the question again and make sure that what we solve for in fact uh, answers that question so these are kind of general uh, uh, guidelines and you have to adjust them for each problem again you know, this is kind of a sixth grade level, middle school level mathematics uh, word problem. So you're not, you won't be using necessarily full on algebra, but uh, what we're going to be uh, using here, there will be an unknown. So let's get to the actual problem now. So here it is, right? So out of 32 students in the class, 24 prefer uh, iPhones over Android phones. So let's just stop there and, and let's see how we can describe this. Um, graphically or some sort of way, you know, some sort of model. What does this mean? Well, it means 24, okay, out of 32 total in the class. So 24 students out of 32 total students of the class like the iPhones, right? So they, um, you know, prefer the iPhones, right? So this is in the class. So what we're talking about here, just to kind of tip what's going on, is the topic that is involved is ratios, rates, and proportions, okay? Ratio, rates, and proportions. You kind of like uh, just get a flavor of these type of problems. You're like, hmm, this problem seems like it involves ratios. And if we're talking about ratios, then we're likely going to be talking about proportions. So this is a very, very, um, you know, uh, big math 
concept topic taught at the middle grade level. And it's actually just continues on in algebra. It's very, very important. But what we want to do is set up some sort of fraction that expresses the information. Okay, so if we have 24 out of 32, let's write it as a fraction, 24 out of 32. But we have to be very specific on what that means. 24 students prefer the iPhone out of the total of 32 in the class. Okay, so we got some sort of um, you know, information down. This would be kind of like our first modeling of the information. So now we want to move on and read the uh, rest of the problem. So based on these results, how many of uh, the 500 students in the school? So now we're, we're out of the class and we're talking about the school now. So we have a school that's 500 students large. So or the population is 500 students. So how many of the 500 students in the school can be expected to prefer using the iPhone? All right. So this right here is a ratio. All right. Now, this ratio gives us a percentage, if you will, of how many people like iPhones out of the total iPhones in the class out of the total class. Well, this same sort of ratio, this same sort of percentage, if you will, of people will be um, the same at the school level. But we need to take this ratio and set up a proportion. OK, so that's what we're going to have to do. Uh, and that's kind of the math topic here. So. Um, our, our proportion is two equal fractions or two equal rates or ratios. So we have a ratio here. I want to set it equal to another ratio. So let me show you how we set this up. And this would be an example of our equation. Okay, now we're going to kind of let X equal the uh, number of uh, people who prefer iPhones in the school because that is what the question is asking. Okay, so how many can be expected to prefer, uh, how many students in the school, not in the class, in the school, can be expected using the iPhone. Well, that is our unknown value or our X. Okay, so let's write it out here. So let's take a look at how ratios and proportions work here real quick. So remember, 24 uh, students out of the class of 32 liked the um, iPhone. Okay, well, this same proportion or this same, this ratio will be the same ratio in terms of the school. It's going to hold true. So in other words, it's this fraction is going to be the same as this fraction, but the denominator, this was the total down here in the class, okay? But now we need to involve the total in the school. So instead of 32 out of a class of 32, think of it as a class of 500, right? It's like just a larger denominator. So this is the entire school, but now what we don't know is this. We don't know how many people out of that 500 prefer um, iPhones, but whatever it is, it's going to be in this proportion, right? It's going to be the same equivalent to this fraction or this percentage. So anyway, so now at this point, okay, again, the topic here is uh, ratios and proportions and rates. Uh, you need to know how to set one up and what it is. And uh, to solve a proportion, so we have 24 out of 32 is the same as some number out of 500. So to wait, the way we solve proportions, which are, which are two equal fractions, is we just do what they call the cross product. We're going to multiply this way. So that's 32 times x right there. And then we have 24 times 500. So that's going to be 24 times 500. So you can do what we call the cross product when we're solving uh, ratios and proportions or proportion problems. If you need help on this, um, ratios, proportions, or rates, check out my videos. I have a lot of videos in my uh, pre-algebra or algebra playlist, or better yet, just jump into my pre-algebra course. Okay, so um, at this point, uh, we need to continue on. We have 32x, 32 times some known uh, value x is equal to 24 times 500, which is 12,000. So at the sixth grade level, you're learning some basic algebra. Now, there are some other ways you can solve this uh, proportion, but this is probably pretty typical of how to solve it. We don't have to, you know, know full-on algebra here to solve this. So let's just talk about how do we solve for x. We have 32 times x is equal to 12,000. So to solve this equation for x, that's what we want to do. I need to simply divide both sides of the equation by 32. Two. Okay, and when I do that, I get x is equal to 12,000 divided by 32, which is 375. So I solved for x. Now, I want to make sure 
that I understand the answer, and I'm answering the question. So x was equal to what? Well, that was the, remember, we had x over 500. This is how many students prefer the iPhone, okay, um, out of an entire school population of 500. So uh, that's our answer, 375 uh, students, actually. We'll just say this, be more specific and correct. Students prefer, prefer the iPhone. And that's it. So if you got this problem right, I would say, wow, that is pretty cool. I would definitely give you a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%. I'd be like, great job. Keep it up. Yeah, let's throw in a couple stars. Those are cool, too. But um, yeah, that's excellent. Okay, that shows me that you have understanding of rates, ratios, proportions, you know, and you can handle word problems. So this is a, you know, pretty basic level word problem, but pretty, uh, um, you know, let's say common at this middle school uh, math level. Now, if you're at a higher level than that and you had a difficulty with this, don't panic. What you need to do is work on your math skills. Okay. Remember word problems, solving word problems are nothing more than uh, application of your math skills. Okay, so if this video helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. It helps me out. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. Great place for someone like myself who's obsessed with teaching math in a clear and understandable way. On my channel, uh, I have various playlists, uh, um, have math topics organized from basic to advanced. So you can check all that stuff out. I'm posting new material all the time. But my best math help will be found by following uh, the description or the links in the description of this video. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.